Hey, thank you for coming by Tori Magoo 44. Today is the 25th of May, uh, 2011. Today's a very special day for a number of different reasons. Number one, it was my original anniversary day. I got married uh, May 25th, 1974. And I doubt if Harold Bazazian is watching because he's pretty, I don't know, skittish about looking at the internet. He's still in the Church of Scientology. He divorced me after I had left the Church of Scientology in 2000, which he claims I left him. But as I've said, my door is open. Come on over. I don't know where you live. I don't know where you work. So you tell me who left who. I left the cult of Scientology. I didn't leave my husband. But he likes to say I did, and that's up to him. But this message is to him, first of all, first and foremost, which is to say, I will always love you, and I will always thank you for the wonderful years we did have together. Oh, I'm going to cry. Anyway, we had a very good marriage for a very long time. And the Church of Scientology does break up family. Here's my SP to clear for any of you who didn't see it, right? See, Tori Bazazian, that was my last name, right? And it, they, de they declared me right after Mark Bunker put up Magoo dancing in Boston. They didn't even tell me. They didn't have any ethics handlings, which you're supposed to have. Bada boom, declared. There you go. I only found out because I called later to get my treasury, you know, all of my receipts to get money back. And they put me through the justice chief who said, you're declared SP. I said, I don't have it in writing. And there's a little policy. Maybe you're too young to know, but it's called, if it isn't writing, it isn't true. So at that point, she FedExed it to me and I've got a copy of it. That's how I got it. But anyway, today is also kind of a, a huge significant day because it is Oprah Winfrey's last day of the Oprah Winfrey show. And that's significant to me because she was the very beginning of me waking up, believe it or not. I mean, there were a lot of things that helped me wake up, as I've said. Me having epilepsy for a long time was a big blessing in my life because I had to fight the church on it. And, uh, you know, it just kind of kept twinging on, you know, in, starting with my mom saying they're going to kill you, you know, if you keep following their plan. And she was right, and they have killed some people following their plan of medical abuse. So I didn't, and I fought them, and I finally left. So that was one of them. But one of the key things that happened in the very late 70s, I was 100 pounds overweight, which I've lost, thank you very much. And, um, and Weight Watchers works very well if you need to lose weight. And the thing is this, don't try to lose weight. Learn how to eat. That's the key thing. That was a big thing for me. I've been dieting, gaining weight, losing weight, gaining weight all my life. My brother too, my father too. And I finally realized at 53, I don't know how to eat. You know, just eat and have a good day and have a good week and not have to worry about, am I gaining weight? I got to lose some weight, you know, that kind of thing. So that that's how I got into Weight Watchers. Not to eat their food. I don't, except for their desserts because they're very good. But um, anyway, long story short, I was 100 pounds overweight had given all of our money to the Church of Scientology. So, we were, you know, it was awful. It was on OT7, a complete nightmare, wasn't working for me at all. I had been on it for seven years. So, sort of tortured, you know, because you can't talk to anybody, you can't tell them, you can go into qual and tell them it's not working and they just make you word clear words or do ethics handlings or whatever. You know, it's always something else to fix you so you'll get better, so you'll win at it. Right. I'm writing to Miscavige saying this is not working. Let me off the level. I'm getting back over and over. OK, continue. That's it. That's all I'm getting. OK, continue. Nobody will help me fix me. You know, let me off the goddamn level so I can do it. Now, you watching it. There's a lot of people that watch this and go, why didn't you just walk out? Because when you're in a mind control cult, it doesn't work that way. And we got in in the six. I got in 69. I was 22 years old. Okay, so now I'm all the way at the top. I'm 53 years old. I'm waking up, right? Okay, but this was a little before that, probably 50, around my 50th birthday. I watch Oprah. And uh, and I know there's a lot of atheists that are part of my YouTube site, so don't be upset. But I've always believed in higher power is God, whatever you call it. And she mentioned it today. Today is the last day. And she said, I love, this is one of the things she said, please take responsibility. Somebody gave her this sign, and I love this. Please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. And see, if all of us did that and really did it, we would have a lot better world. We really would. So um, I was watching her, and she said, 
All I did was give my life up to God. And I had not had God in my life, even though Scientology lies and says they do. And, they, you know, I said I would do, oh, I'm a Catholic and a Scientologist, you know, but no, they're not. Hubbard, if you can read through most of his stuff, had nothing to say about God. And in fact, put down churches, angels, you know, a lot of things that have to do with most religions, right? Okay, so I'm thinking, God, I, you know, I, I don't even have God in my life, right? So now I go to the Shrine Auditorium, I kind of beam up to God, and I say, okay, you got it. My life, one year, do whatever you want. I don't care. I'm out of the way. I am. Which later my girlfriend said, that's really one of the keys to this whole game, you know, in life, is get out of the way. Because, uh, you know, it's going to move along, right? But often we're in the way, you know, figuring everything out, right? But anyway, long story short, I got out of the way thinking I'd be clearing Brazil or something like that. Ended up on the internet, which I wasn't ever going to go on. Anyway, long story short, I meet, I make 4,000 posts in four weeks. That was the only time I was on the internet. I make 4,000 posts, except I earlier opened up these phony accounts that you've heard about with Yachty. But that was a different thing. I didn't know what he was doing with them. You know, it was just to really help me. I'm not going to tell you what I'm doing because then you'll never end up in deposition. I'm like, okay, fine. Here's the accounts. Totally trusted him. There you go. But as far as being on the internet, I didn't read it. I didn't look at it. I didn't post on it. Nothing, right? Nothing. So except for the right before that was the Battlefield Earth thing. And I got that shut down. I did. I posted on that. As, uh, what was that? Get Real 101. That's right. That was me. For Battlefield Earth. And then I got it shut down. The whole battle site. And I sort of thought, okay, I got a message board shut down. And that was just me. And I, it was kind of like if you had people in your dining room. And now there's a bunch of people in the living room. Which was all religion Scientology. Which was really the whole world. But I didn't really realize that. So I thought, well, I got the dining room shut down. I shut down the, the living room. So I kind of go on there making my little 4,000 posts. And you can still Google it. And they're insane. And they're insane because I didn't know what I was doing. I did. I wasn't consciously going, I'm going to wake up. I didn't even think I was. I just thought maybe some of these cowboys had something that I didn't know. And I wanted to know what it was. And I missed the cowboys. And that's how I felt they were. They were like, they could say what they want. They could talk what they want. They could look what they want. They had no stop. So they reminded me of like cowboys, right? The old cowboys. Not cowboys now, but, you know, the old cowboys. You know, they're really Wild West kind of thing. And I missed it. I really did. I missed the game. So I pop in there, make 4,000 posts, totally nutso posts, nothing. But in the meantime, as you know, Andreas writes me, asks me a few things. I wake up, the Truman Show falls apart, and I escape out. Not even knowing. I didn't know they did black PR and nasty things until they canceled my van to go out to the airport. Believe it or not, I'd done, I'd open up the phony accounts did not connect that that was like a fair game thing. Didn't connect it. Because Yachty just said, just do this, give it to us, we'll handle the rest. I didn't know what they were doing. So not until I, I set up the van to go to the airport, to leave and go across the country to see Stacy and Bob and Jesse, did I realize, holy shit, maybe they do do this fair game stuff. Then I get to the airport, as you know, planes canceled, the vice president's there, they chase me across the country, my husband's in Chicago, you know, by then it was just like, this is too much. I have got to go find out if I want to leave the church before I drag my husband into this whole thing, right? So that was why I went by myself. I doubt if he'll watch this, but I just wanted to say thank you to Oprah because I've written to her trying to say, please let me on your show. I mean, I have a great story. I was in a mind control cult and I got out. The only problem is her best friends are in the mind control cult, John Travolta and Tom Cruise. So I kind of knew she wasn't going to really have me on the show. Even though I've written her, I've sent videos, I've tried to get on the show, but I figured not. So I just wanted to tell anybody who's watching here that A, she was a key thing in that because a lot of people put her down. But you know what? She has millions of fans and... I wish her well. I'll always thank you. Just like my husband. I will always thank you. I, you. My husband gave me a gift I will have until I die. And that's our son. And he's one of the most wonderful gifts in my life that I've ever had. And, the, and probably the second biggest gift in my life is all of you guys. 
that are right there. And Oprah said the same thing. You know, it's like the people that have supported her are her greatest gift. And and it's true for me. I mean, I'm like a little itty bitty thing compared to her. But you know what? All you guys are a huge gift to me. You have kept, you'll never know. I always say that. It's so true. You'll never know how much you mean to me. You know what I mean? I know I, like, and she said the same thing. I don't know your names for a lot of you. And we haven't met. But now I'm starting to meet more people because they come up and say hi. And I love that. But you have met a huge thing in my life. And I really, it really, oh, I mean, you can imagine losing all of my friends and my husband of 27 years. And here I am, you know, and all of a sudden these people are like coming around and talking to me. And, you know, now I get the YouTube side and they're posting and saying things. It means so much more than I can tell you. So anyway, thank you. And to every single person in my life who has shared some love with me and let me share love with you. I thank you so much. It's a very special day. So there you go. That's it. Peace out. I hope you all do well and I hope you have an excellent week also and let others into your life because you know what? It's, it's like a river. It moves. As long as it's moving, you're okay. It's just when it's like all stiff like that. Except for one thing. <laughs> but other than that, you know, as long as it's moving, things are moving, you're, you're doing okay. You know, let it move, let it flow. If you're getting abused, get out of there. Call me. If you need help, I'll come pick you up. Bye-bye.